Here are some data that I've made up for this exercise. In column A, we have the number of minutes late that the buses arrived at 30 randomly selected bus stops on the east side of town during peak traffic hours. Now, for purposes of the exercise, the east side happens to be this, the side of town that is mostly white. In column B, we have the same kind of information for 30 randomly selected buses on bus stops on the west side of town, again during the same peak traffic hours. And the west side in this exercise happens to be the mostly minority side of town. So that's the data we have. The question we're going to look at is, is there a difference in the average number of minutes late that the buses arrive on the east side versus the west side? And if there is a difference, is that difference non-randomly different? Is, it, is the difference too great to have uh, had a, 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 an acceptable chance of, sh of having shown up just by virtue of the fact that we picked 30 bus stops from each side of town at random instead of looking at, at all, of the bus, all the bus stops on both sides of town? So what we need to do conceptually is simply average all of these minutes in column A and also in column B to get the average number of minutes uh, that the buses arrive late on each side of town and then use a procedure called a t-test to determine whether that difference is random or non-random. The t-test is under the data tab and the data analysis window. So just click the data tab and then data analysis and this data analysis window will pop up. And once it does, you want to look for something called a t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. That's it right there. Just highlight that t-test and choose OK. When you do, a dialog box is going to open up and you just have to fill in the box. Uh, the variable one, one range, that's going to be the information there in column A. So I'm just going to click in the box and then highlight the information in column A, including the column heading, the east side column heading just clicking with the mouse and dragging down. And then the variable 2 range will be the information in column B, again including the, the, uh, the column header. So just highlight that information. Great. The next box is the hypothesized mean difference. This is almost always going to be zero. The idea here is that we're, we're testing the hypothesis that there's no difference, no non-random difference, uh, between the averages of these two columns. So that's so that's what the, that's where the zero comes from. Check the labels box because remember we, we we included the labels at the tops of both columns in the highlighting. Alpha can stay at 0.05. That's that's kind of the standard. And the last thing you need is is to specify the output range. You can just accept the default if you want and and have it put the uh, the output on a new worksheet. I kind of like to put the output on the the same uh, sheet as the data. So I'm going to choose the the radio button next to output range, click in the box, and then go pick one of these cells here. How about D1 is, is pretty handy. So uh, D1 looks like everything else is ready to go, and I just click OK. And the, uh, the t-test procedure will give us uh, three columns worth of output. I'm just going to highlight those columns, uh, click on the border between any two of them, double click that is, and the columns will expand automatically. And these are my t-test results. There's a lot of information here. The key information, though, is the mean or the average for both the east side and the west side. You can see that on the east side, the average is 5.8 minutes late. On the west side, the average is 8.5 minutes late, about 8.5 minutes late. So we can see that in our sample of 30 bus stops from each side of town during peak traffic hours, uh, the buses are late on you know, regardless of which side of town it is, but they're more late on the mostly minority west side than they are on the, the, the predominantly white east side. But the question now is, are, is, is that difference random or non-random? Could it have just happened by chance? Um, or is there something systematic going on here? To learn the answer to that question, you have to find the two-tail probability test right here and it looks like it's 0.02, so there's about a 2% chance that a random process um, could produce a, a, a difference between the two means of this size. Well, a 2% chance is a pretty small chance, so most likely the difference that we see between these two averages is not random, and if it's not random, that means there's something systematic going on. 
and one explanation would be well it's the minority west side and the buses there run slower than they do on the mainly white side so whatever the reason might be there's a difference there and it's a non-random difference and it suggests that something uh, needs to be done here so given that information you could write a lead something like this Metroville transit buses typically run later on the mostly minority west side than on the mostly white east side during peak traffic hours, a Metroville News investigation has found. Buses arrived an average of 5.8 minutes late for 30 randomly selected scheduled stops on the east side last week, compared to an average of 8.5 minutes late for 30 randomly selected scheduled stops on the west side last week. Given these results, there's only a 5% chance or less that buses run equally late at bus stops throughout the two communities during peak traffic hours. I want to show you one more thing before we finish up with this lesson. It's on the, 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 second, tab, <coughs> the second tab of the spreadsheet. Um, here, everything's the same as the initial example, except that I've, I've made the differences more extreme. The east side data is the same, but the, 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 col the, the column B for the information for the west side, I just made those numbers bigger. And so what happens, of course, is that the average for the west side gets bigger. It's, it's 13 minutes late in this example uh, and still 5.8 minutes late on the east side. So there's a bigger difference between the two averages. When the difference gets bigger, the probability that that difference showed up due to random sampling error becomes smaller. And in this case, it got a lot smaller. And this is what I wanted to show you. When you look at the two-tail probability for this example, it's a really weird looking number, 2.71897 and then the a capital E for some reason, a dash and then 05. What in the world does this mean? Well, if you, if you think back to high school uh, math, you might remember something called sci scientific notation. And that's what's going on here. Uh, this number is really, really small, a whole lot less than 0.05. And because it's so small, Excel has automatically switched to scientific notation as a way of expressing that small number. All this means is that the first non-zero number you see there, which is a 2, doesn't show up until uh, five decimal places to the right of the zero. Now, in case that's confusing for you, all you have to do is highlight that cell, just like this, and Excel will show you the real number up here on, on, the, on the function line. Um, so there it is. It's a one, two, three, four zeros, and then a two. So this is a really, really small number. Uh, and that's all I wanted you to see, is that if you see something that looks like this, it's not 2.71. That would be a whole lot more than 0.05. Um, it, it's actually a whole lot less than 0.05. It's a very, very small number. This spreadsheet shows made-up data for 15 randomly selected burglaries from predominantly white neighborhoods and 15 randomly selected burglaries from predominantly minority neighborhoods. In column A, you have simply an identification number for each case. In column B, you have the indication of whether the burglary occurred in a white neighborhood or a minority neighborhood. And in column C, you have an indication of whether the burglary uh, has been cleared, that is, in, that is uh, solved, someone has been arrested and, and convicted for that, for that burglary, or whether the burglary is still open, meaning it is unsolved. So what we're going to look at here is whether burglaries in white neighborhoods are significantly more likely to have been cleared than burglaries in minority neighborhoods. To do it, we're going to use a pivot table and then a, st a statistic called a chi-square. To get the pivot table, you've seen this before, you click on the insert tab and then pivot table and the uh, pivot table option there. Select the data to be included in the pivot table. Excel is going to take a guess. In this case, it guessed correctly. If it doesn't guess correctly, you can always manually select the data that you want to deal with. I also need to choose a place for the output of the, uh, of the pivot table analysis. I'm going to choose the existing worksheet and choose a convenient location. Let's go with cell E1 right here. And click OK. And now I need to fill out the pivot table uh, dialog box. Now think for a minute about how you do this. What you need to do is figure out which of the variables is a cause of which of the other variables. 
And in this case, if you think about it, really it's the location that we think anyway is causing the status of the burglary. In other words, uh, whether the burglary is cleared or open kind of depends on where the burglary occurred, if it occurred in a white, a white neighborhood or a minority neighborhood. So it would, it would seem that location is the cause and status is the result. Now once you figure that out, it's fairly easy to figure out what to put where in the pivot table dialog box. A nice shortcut is that the lo the sorry the uh, the cause goes in the column labels box. The cause and column labels both start with C, so that's an easy way to remember. And the result goes in the row labels box and also in the values box, which is right next to the row labels box. There again, result starts with an R, as does row labels, so that's a way to remember. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill that out. Let's uh, take the cause, the location, in the column labels box, and the result status goes in the row labels box as well as the values box right there. And as I was doing that, of course, Excel went ahead and built the pivot table. It's right here. And so we find that, you know, just eyeballing the data, it looks like um, um, cases are a lot more likely to be, to be cleared if they're in white neighborhoods than if they're in minority neighborhoods. We had, um, of the 15 cases randomly selected from white neighborhoods, 12 of them have been cleared, and only three are still open. By comparison, of the 15 randomly selected cases from minority neighborhoods, only five have been cleared, and 10 of them are still being investigated. So the question now is, is that difference uh, large enough to suggest that it is non-random, that there's something systematic going on uh, between uh, where a burglary occurs, a white neighborhood or minority neighborhood, and whether it has been solved or is still under investigation. The easiest way to figure that out is to begin by highlighting all of the data in the original pivot table, right-click and choose copy, and then somewhere underneath the pivot table, right click and choose paste special and paste just the values and click OK. Now what we've done here is we've created a copy of the pivot table that we can mess around with without messing up the original pivot table. In fact, I like to go ahead and do it a second time and get two copies of the pivot table, just like that. If I hit escape, I can get rid of the selection around the original, original pivot table. Now if I wanted to, I could go back to the original pivot table, um, click on it, and change the um, value field settings to column percentages. Uh, percent of column total, just like that. And now we can see the actual pattern in the data. 80% of the cases in the white neighborhoods were have been solved compared to only 33% of those in the in the minority neighborhoods. Okay, so those are the percentages, but what we're really interested in is whether these counts down here um, are different enough to suggest that there's something non-random going on. Now, unfortunately, Excel's um, data analysis tool pack does not have an automatic tool for doing this. You have to do this kind of manually. But once you figure out how to do it, the pattern's the same every time. It's not that difficult. Go to your, your, the, the two copies of the pivot table you've created, <clears throat> specifically go to the second of the two, and hollow it out. Highlight those four cells right in the middle, and just hit delete. Okay, so we've, we've, uh, we've gotten those out of there. What we're going to do now is we're going to compute the expected values. That is the values you would expect to see in the table if there were absolutely no uh, relationship at all between uh, where a burglary occurred and whether or not it's been solved. And you do it by, uh, by doing this. It, it's going to require a formula, so you start with the equal sign. And then you take whatever's at the bottom of the, of the column, multiply it by whatever's at the end of the row, the grand total at the end of the row, and then divide it by the, uh, the overall total in this case the, the, the 30 cases overall, and hit enter. And then you just repeat the pattern for the next cell down. The bottom of the column times the end of the row, notice we're down one row now, we're not up at the 17, we're at the 13, divided by the grand total there. Okay, another time, equal bottom of the column times the end of the row divided by the grand total, and one more time, bottom of the row Time, bottom of the column times the end of the row divided by the grand total. Okay. Now the, uh, the two numbers there, 8.5 and 6.5, are identical for the two columns, 
only because we had an equal number of cases from white and minority neighborhoods, 15 each. If those, uh, if those 15s were different, if it was like 15 and 20 or something like that, these expected values would be different. So if, if you're dealing with a, a, that kind of case, don't be surprised when the expected values are different. They don't always have to be the same as they are here. All right. So once you have your observed and expected values, it's, you're ready to do the chi-square test. Um, I usually just type a label for it right here, like that. And then here's the column for the chi, or the, the formula for the chi-square test. Start with an equal sign and type chi-square, C-H-I-S-Q dot T-E-S-T, like that. A left parenthesis. And then first highlight the actual range. That would be the range that you saw in your actual data. I just did that using the mouse. And then a comma. And then the observed, or, sorry, the expected values, what, you, what we just calculated with our... Um, bottom of the column times the end of the row divided by the grand total formula. And then hit a, a right parenthesis and hit enter. And there's the probability that a difference this big would show up purely due to, to randomness. And it's a very small probability. It's 0 .009, a whole lot less than 0 .05. So what that means is that randomness is not a very good explanation, not a very likely explanation for getting a difference this stark um, in, in the burglary clearance rate between white and minority neighborhoods. So if, if randomness isn't a very good explanation, then the next most likely explanation is that there's something systematic going on between where a burglary occurs and whether or not it, it ends up getting solved. So this is pretty good evidence that if you live in a white neighborhood and get burglarized, you're more likely to have your, your, your crime solved faster than if you live in a minority neighborhood.